All right, Karina baby, good morning. Today is the 26th of August, which makes you five years, five months, and 15 days, oh, and 16 days old today. I'm sorry, today is the 26th. I should have did it yesterday, too, and specified that it was 15 for yesterday. All right, so the man from Mars is our story for today from a year full of stories. All right, the man from Mars. As I was walking down the road, I met a man from Mars. And when I asked him where he lived, he pointed to the stars. Go right around the moon, he said, and straight on past the sun, then left along the Milky Way. There, where I come from. But when I turned to look again, the man from Mars was gone. Oh, he went away. That was super cute. That was the man from Mars. Alright. Yesterday we did the golden goose. With the little boy who got to get married to the princess. Today is why the sea is salt. So why the sea is salt. From the world's best fairy tales. Once upon a time long, long ago, there were two brothers, the one rich and the other poor. When Christmas Eve came, the poor one had not a bite in the house, either of meat or bread. So he went to his brother and begged him, in heaven's name, to give him something for Christmas Day. All right? What is the Christmas about? The Christmas is about rest and food, right? That's, because we're Jewish, so what is the Christmas about? That's why Mama looked it up. So the Christmas is supposed to be rest and food, so the brother should really give him some food and maybe some rest at his house, right? It was by no means the first time his brother had been forced to give some food to him, and he was no more pleased to being asked now than he generally was. If you will do what I ask you, you shall have a whole ham, said he. The poor one immediately thanked him and promised. Well, here is the ham, and now you must go straight to dead man's hall said the rich brother throwing the ham at him oh no he made him a bad deal didn't he well i will do what i have promised see look at that another promise was made right what does the bible say you don't make a promise that you can't say yes or no to don't make any promises to people don't make promises baby it's not a good idea because mama has this thing about keeping her word so if i make a promise to somebody i feel like I have to like uphold it like no matter what and it's just and I make promises to people sometimes I'm like why did I do that because then you have to uphold the promise right and in the Torah it says the only person who let you have a promise is your husband if you're married or your father if you're um, still on wed right and so we don't want to be making promises to people well, I will do what I have promised, said the poor brother, and he took the ham and set off. He went on and on for the live long day, and at nightfall he came to a place where there was a bright light. I have no doubt this is the place of the man with the ham, and an old man with a long white beard was chopping Yale logs. Good evening said the man with the ham. Good evening to you. Where are you going at this late hour? asked the old man. I am going to dead man's hall. If only I am on the right track, answered the poor man. Oh yes, you are right enough, for it is here. The old man said, when you go inside, there will all want to buy your ham, but they don't get much meat to eat there but you must not sell it unless you can get for it the hand mill which stands behind the door 
When you come out again, I will teach you how to stop the hand mill, with, which is useful for almost everything. So the man with the ham thanked the other for his good advice and rapped at the door. When he wanted, when he went in, everything happened just as the old man had said. All the people, great and small, came around him like ants in an anthill, and each tried to outbid the other for the ham. By rights, my old woman and I shall have it for our Christmas dinner, but since you have set your hearts upon it, I must just give it up to you, said the man, but if I sell it, I will have the hand mill standing there behind the door. At first they were not they would not hear of this and hammered and bargained with the man but he stuck to what he had said and the people were forced to give the hand mill to him when the man returned to the yard he asked the old woodcutter how to stop the hand mill and when he had learned that he asked him and set off with the speed he with all the speed he could but did not arrive home until after the clock had struck 12 on christmas eve but where in the world have you been asked the old woman his wife here i have sit waiting for you hour after hour oh she was worried and have you not even two sticks to lay across each other underneath the Christmas porridge pot? Oh, I could not come before I had something of importance to see about and a long way to go to. But now you shall just see, said the man. Then he set the mill on the table and bade a first grade light. Then the tablecloth, then the meat, then the beer, and everything else that was good for a Christmas Eve supper. And the milk ground all that he ordered. Bless me, said the old woman, as one thing after another appeared. She wanted to know where her husband had got in the mill, but he would not tell her. Never mind where I got it, you can see it is a good one and the water that turns it will never freeze said the man so he ground meat drank all kinds of good things to late through christmas tide to late throw through christmas tide and on the third day he invited friends to come to feast now when the rich brother saw what there was at the banquet and in the house, he was both vexed and angry. So he was, he was perplexed, he didn't understand, and he was upset, right? For he grumbled every, for he for he rated everything his brother had. On Christmas Eve, he was so poor, he came to me and begged for a trifle. And here he gives a feast as if he were both a count and a king, thought he. But for heaven's sakes, tell me where you got your riches, said he to his brother. From behind the door, said he who owned the mill. For he did not choose to satisfy his brother on that point. But later in the evening, when he had taken a drop too much, he could not refrain from telling how he had come by the hand mill. There you can see what has brought him all my wealth. And he brought out the mill from the cupboard and made it grind first one thing and then another. When the brother saw that, he insisted on having the mill and after a great deal of persuasion, got it. But he had to give $300 for it, and the poor brother was to keep it 
till hay, till hay making time. For he thought, if I keep it that long, I can make it grand meat and drink that will lay, that will last me a long year. All right, so the brother is thinking, I will keep it until summer, right, where he could do all the hay, because it's now winter. So he wants to keep it for four months at his house where he thinks he can make enough food for a year. But what's the problem with having enough food for a year? There's more than one year to life, right? I so say he's not going to have enough food to sustain himself. And three hundred dollars isn't going to do anything. It's not going to last, right? It's going to last what a month for him in this time? Maybe that's a month of bills. I doubt it. It's not going to last anything. During that time, the mill did not grow rusty, and when hay harvest came, the rich brother took it. But the other had taken good care not to teach him how to stop it. It was evening when the rich man reached home, and in the morning he bade the old woman who, who he bade the old woman who tended his rooms and kitchen go out and spread the hay after the mowers, for he would attend to the house himself that day. So when the dinner time drew near, he sat the mill in the kitchen table and said, grind herring and milk pudding and do it both quickly and well. So the mill began to grind herring and milk pudding and first all the dishes and tubs were filled and then it covered the kitchen floor. The man twisted the turners, the mills, and, and did all he could to make it stop. But howsoever he turned it, he turned it and screwed it, the mill went on grinding. And in a short time, the pudding rose so high that the mill was almost, that the man was almost drowned. So he threw open the parlor door but it was not long before the mill had ground the polo, had ground the parlor floor too. And it was with difficulty and danger that the man got through the mess of pudding and grabbed hold of the door latch. When the door was open, he did not stay long in the room, but ran out. And the herring, the pudding, came after him and, st and streamed out over both farm and field. Now the old woman who was out spreading the hay began to think dinner was long in coming. Oh, look at that. Said to the woman and the mowers, Now the old woman who was out spreading the hay began to think dinner was long in coming and said to the woman and the mowers, though the master does not call us home, we may as well go. It may be his, be he finds he is not good at making dinner. Oh, she's worried about him not being able to cook. That's cute. And I shall go and help him. So they began to struggle homeward, but a little way up the hill they met the herring and pudding, all pouring forth, winding about one over the other, and the man himself in front of the field. Would to heaven that each of you have a hundred stomachs. Take care that you are not drowned in the pudding. He cried as he ran by them, as if mischief wore at his heels. Down to where his brother dwelled, then he begged him to take the mill back again, and to do so in this instant. For, said he, if it ground one more hour more, the whole district would be destroyed by herring and pudding. But the brother would not take it until the other paid him another three hundred dollars, and that was, and that he was obliged to do. Now the poor brother had both the money and the mill again. 
So it was not long before he had a farmhouse much finer than his brothers, but the mill ground him so much money that he covered his house with bricks with blocks of gold. And as it lay close by the seashore, it shone and glittered far out to sea. Everyone who sailed by put it to visit the rich man in the gold farmhouse, and everyone wanted to see the wonderful mill. For the report of it spread far and wide, and there was no one who had not heard heard tale of it. After a long, long time, there came a skipper who wished to see the mill. He asked if it could make salt. Yes, it can make salt, said he who owned it. And when the skipper heard that, he wished with all his might and main to have the mill no matter what it cost. He thought that if he had it, he would not have to sail far away over the pillars, the pillar of sea for his cargo of salt. At first, the owner would not hear of parting with the mill, but the skipper begged and, and prayed, and at last the man sold it to him for many, many thousands of dollars. When the skipper had the mill, he did not stay long, for he was afraid the man would change his mind, and he had no time to ask how he was to stop it grinding, but went on board his, his ship as fast as he could. When he had gone a little way out to sea, he took the mill on deck, grind salt, and grind both quickly and well, said the skipper. So the mill began to grind salt, till it spewed out like water. And when the skipper had the ship filled, he went to stop the mill. But which, whichsoever way he turned it, and however he tried, it went on grinding. And the heap of salt grew higher and higher, till at last the ship sank. There lies the mill at the bottom of the sea, and still, day by day, it grinds on. And that is why, and that, and that is why the sea, and that is why the sea is salt. I'm like, where's the rest of the words? It's on the bottom. All right, Greta, baby, that was super cute. Why the sea is salt. All right, so let's do, tomorrow's gonna be the ugly duckling. Let's do swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Well, I looked over Jordan and what did I see he coming forth to carry me home a band of angels coming after me coming forth to carry me home swing low sweet chariot coming forth to carry me home swing low sweet chariot Coming forth to carry me home. Well, sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. Yeah, yeah. coming forth to carry me home. But still, I feel my soul is heavenly bound. Coming forth and carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming forth to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming forth to carry me home. Now, if you get there before I do, coming forth to carry me home. 
tell all my friends I'll be coming there too. Coming forth to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming forth to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Come and forth and carry me home. You know that I love, I love, I love you. Too. Come and forth to carry me home. You know my word is good. You know my word is true. Come and forth and carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Come and forth to carry me home. Swing low. Sweet chariot, come and forth to carry me home. I'll be coming home, coming home, coming home to you. Come and forth to carry me home. You know my word is good, you know my word is true. Come and forth and carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot. Come and forth to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Come and forth and carry me home. Karina, baby, mama loves you. Mama misses you. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to give you a hug. I can't wait to hold you. I can't wait to take you anywhere you want to go. I can't wait to hear about your days and your adventures. My favorite part of your day. Baby, you know what today is? Today is the best day in the entire world because you're you're alive and you're well and you're in your world right now. I used to I used to ask you every single day when when we got up. I we I used to ask you what did you dream about and you usually told me that you dreamt about being in the desert with some camels and there were guys with firecrackers that were putting firecrackers on the ground. And uh, then you changed to a camel cricket when you met a real camel and you're like it was a camel cricket it was hopping in my hand and I was in the desert. And there was these men with firecrackers, and they were making firecrackers go off the ground, right? And then I would add, tell you, you know, I, I like we would sing Bakuto, good morning. We sing Bakuto, we thank you for this life. We sing Bakuto each morning. This way we know it will be all right, right? And I used to ask you. Uh, I used to ask you, baby, do you know what today is? And you go, no, what, mama? I go, it's the best day in the entire world because you're in it. That's all mama cared about. Mama just wanted to spend time with you and be with you. And then we'd go into your bedroom, and you'd pick out what you wanted your lesson to be for the day, for your school lesson for the morning, and then I'd let you pick out whatever you wanted to wear because it was very important to me that you got to pick out what you wanted to wear each day. All your clothes were laid out. You had socks in the bin. Oh my gosh, you got, having a mama home with you makes a really, really good childhood. Papa didn't think so, but it does. It does. I just love you and miss you, baby. I really do. Miss everything about you. I miss picking you up first thing in the morning. Because every single night you grow just a little bit, or else mama's just really weak in the morning. But it's nice to just hold you and be there with you. That's all I cared about. Alright, let's do... Sing a song of six pence a pocket full of fry. Four and twenty black birds baked in the pie. When the pie was open, the birds began to sing. Now wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? The king was in his counting house, counting out his money. The queen was in the parlor, eating bread and honey. The maid was in the garden, setting out her clothes. When down came a blackbird that pecked off her nose. Right? Alright, baby, let's do Lila Toe. Lila Toe, and good night to you. Lila Toe, may your dreams come true. We sing Lila Toe, may Israel protect you. 
throughout the night until we reach the morning light. I love you so incredibly much. I miss you so incredibly much that it hurts. Mama is just trying to keep busy throughout her days in order to get back to you. And that's really all I'm trying to do. Because you can't stay still. If you stay still, time moves really slow because time is relative, right? So you don't want time to move slow. You want time to just, I want time to go faster. So I try to keep busy on the farm and I try to keep busy just every day. Read your books every day. Write to you every day because I miss you. Every time I'm out, I try to get you something. I just, I love you, baby. Like Papa always used to say, Mama's his son, Papa's my moon, and you're a rainbow baby, we love you. No matter what, baby, we love you. All right, Karina, honey, I hope you have a beautiful day, and I hope you have tons of fun. No matter what it is that you're doing, honey, I love you.